that where almost all the school in the country, they uh, up to sixth or seventh level, they all are supposed to visit that place. Uh, there, the children they express about their uh, relationship, about the sexual things. All those things. So that way, they and it is compulsory that all schools must go through such centers. I think that was uh, one way. Even the sometimes the abortion and all. So they conduct there and uh, they go home. And sometimes youngster says, "Please don't tell to my uh, father. Don't tell to my mother." Or sometimes they will say, "Don't call my. I don't want to speak to my mother or to my father." I don't want to go uh, tell them about these things. So they also have uh, some counseling session for the parents over there. So I think that was one way to make them uh, uh, understand about the sexuality and if something happens, then they, they are helped there. Even the, um, as a parents, they say, Sir, young parents, they become, and uh, there it is a compulsory that a boy go with the girl who is pregnant in the their maternity center. So that was their health. I mean, this is a part of the education and counseling. Anybody else on uh, potential PIL? Just, uh, I'm a scheme on the I'm an advocate. Um, before, I, I'm practicing the High Court and Jackie Court. Uh, one thing, sir, Mr. Banjal, sir, that before going filing a PIL, the homework we have to do, before that we have to think what is the mindset of the society where we need it. I am from a, uh, I studied in a boys high school. In our uh, biology curriculum, there was something related to female reproductive, uh, a human reproductive system. The teacher was a female teacher. But what happened? Uh, that portion was she was not very comfortable to teach us in a boys' school. So, somebody else, a male teacher who is not familiar with biology, is a science teacher, was taught us that course. So, all these things, keeping all this, our, uh, and also that we have to delink religion from the sex education. So, homework has to be done. She has pointed certain things. There is a potential. But the, we have to sensitize even to judges also. Those judges also, they are from this old uh, school of thought. We don't have this very few judges even for this 377 things, other things. So we have to see, uh, unless we have to convince the court if there is a, <coughs> there is, because some state, some uh, political party, they have the, their reservations. But we have to deal with religion, we have to come to the health law aspect and health aspect and uh, ethics law, uh, ethics and religion will come there. But we have to do a lot of preparation and such kind of sensitizing seminar will do. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Any other comment before we give the mic to Deepa? Anybody else? Sure. Hello. I'm Jubli from HRL in Delhi. Uh, sir, my question is that we are talking about uh, female uh, sterilization but, but not uh, men sterilization. Right, so you've gone back to the sterilization. Yes. So we take this up. Please make a note, all those who are, because we will make a note of all the potential peers that can be done. As we, uh, as India has uh, largest number of uh, adolescents, and 2003 it was a policy of youth, uh, uh, this, that uh, this sex education is added in these educational curriculums. But yet India has to do, do, uh, to do a lot in this field, but nothing is done. Yeah. Thank you, Jyoti. I think the sex education should come out from their own families, where they should start. Otherwise, the, if the girls are prominent or they can speak towards the, their parents, then most of the problems will be solved in their own families itself. Uh, I'm Manjula from Gujarat. Uh, uh, maybe my uh, entire debate is on this uh, something not with regard to reproductive health, but that is linked to it. Uh, in your presentation, you made on mental health and sustained uh, abuse prevention. Because I have been handling almost 35 to 40 cases of 
young children who have been uh, by, um, survivors of uh, sexual violence. And uh, recently, I got a call from the National Commission for Child Rights Protection about is there a, uh, is there any trauma counselling happening of the children who who have been survivors of se uh, sexual violence? And I would say that no, because I have handled their cases of gang rape where uh, ultimately it becomes the responsibility of an organization like us to help the survivors of violence to ensure that she is given a, uh, a, a, prep, a proper mental treatment and that I, there were two very severe cases of trafficking of a young Dalit girl of 14 years of age who was kidnapped from the school and then she was uh, sold off at four places for an entire year. <laughs> and then and apart from justice we were able to get a conviction but I think that was not the the end result. I would say that because the kind of uh, counseling which we need to go, give and, and the trauma she goes through from her family and from the society, I think that was uh, that was terrible for because that comes on us. I'm also a lawyer, but it's also like you have to do so many other things also. Another case was where a girl of 12th grade she was gang raped and then she became a, a maniac and then how she was given treatment in the in the civil hospital where she was given electric shots twice and I take, took her out from there and then we uh, and you have, even have to you have to give shelter to that person because you, somebody, somebody was talk, talking about shelter for uh, people who, who are surviving from this kind of violence so I think these are the things which is going on in my mind that how do you make the state responsible for uh, like what does it mean to get access to justice like and and if you see the whole, uh, the process which goes through the justice and if you don't have organizations like us who can help the survivors of violence and uh, this is also happening in the schools in the in the institutions like I handled a very serious case of a gang rape of a young th girl who was gang raped by four uh, six uh, male professors in all girls college and like again she was also collapsing uh, when whenever she was raped. So, and then the entire process of getting justice for the girl, it went for one year. Ultimately, we got judgment, but but then how much work you have to do as an organization and as an individual, because it's also your, it becomes your personal responsibility to ensure that that person gets uh, not only justice, but also she lives a life of dignity and self-respect. So I think these are the issues which link with the youth and, I, and how do we deal it with through the PIL, because certain PILs have to be taken up especially with regard to sexual violence. Thank you. Marikaj Panjula, what a startling case this is. I want the organizers who are taking down minutes, please flag these cases. Apart from the sexuality education case, we'll come back to it now, and the PIL there. Sterilization of men. Just flag it, because we want to assign lawyers to sit with people and discuss these issues in small little groups and come up with some ideas. And Manjula's thing about sexual violence against children, which included the mental health aspect of electric shocks being given. So these are actually connected but separate as well. So uh, uh, a team of lawyers and uh, DJ, if you can help us with this as well. If we can sit with Manjula, form a small team, perhaps over lunch, and discuss the, the, the possibility of working with her on this. Such a shocking uh, case. A doable case, not so easy. Winnable, but we have to sit carefully and see how we do this. Anybody else? Uh, please don't worry if it doesn't stay to the topic of sexuality education. We'll come back to it immediately, but we are taking even random interventions, no problem, because we'll flag these cases. As I said, by the end of today and by the end of tomorrow, we want to flag about 10 cases to do and actually finish it within a time-bound program. Keep within two months or three months to finish those cases. Vishpalata? Uh, yes. The uh, case is that the girl is like 20 years old and she is in the Rapport District. And her father is in the same way that she is in the same way that she is in the same way that she is in the same और वो इतनी परेशान हो गई है कि वो किसी से बता नहीं पा रही थी पर जस्ट अभी हम लोगों को भी ये केस अभी अभी जस्ट मिला है और हम इसकी तहकीक कर रहे हैं और ये केस में जब वो लड़की ने घर से जब बाहर निकल के कुछ लोगों से और अपनी मां से जब ये बताया कि मेरे फादर ही मेरे साथ में इस तरीके से कर रहे हैं तो फादर फादर थोड़े से दबंग किस्म के हैं ये पता चला है हमें और दूसरी बात ये पता चला है कि उस लड़की को ही उसके फादर ने और कम्युनिटी के लोगों ने 
पागल घोषित कर दिया है कि ये लड़की इस तरीके से जबकि वो लड़की के बारे में हमें पता चला है कि वो ऐसा ऐसी बिल्कुल भी नहीं है तो ये केस हमारे यहाँ छत्तीसगढ़ के दो वकील है इधर आप इनसे मिलना दोपहर को जस्ट फ्लैग द केस प्लीज दी ऑर्गेनाइजर्स वो टेकिंग मिनट जस्ट फ्लैग दीज केसेस जस्ट सिट विद डिस्कस विद एनी अदर एनी अदर क्वेश्चन बिफोर वी रिटर्न टू दिजिनल टॉपिक एनी बडी एल्स सो दीपा थैंक यू पुष्पा लता जस्ट सिट विद किशोर एंड एल्बिन फ्रॉम छत्तीसगढ़ दीपा थैंक यू कॉलिन I actually am kind of encouraged that we are expanding beyond the sexuality education, you know, that 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 ambit. Because frankly, you know, while it is, I think it would be an interesting idea to to go out and do a PIL around access to life skills education, health education, sexuality education. Call it what you may. Uh, but I think there are many other issues that impinge on how young people. can exercise their options and definitely things around sex, you know sexual abuse harassment child marriage i mean these are also you know all together you can't have i think one case i think there there could be a constellation of issues around which you can work on improvement for young people's sexual and reproductive health and rights so i know that you all have made a beginning with child marriage cases um it's obviously stuck somewhere in the courts i think the, the the i think the policy makers in delhi are very seized with you know india's bad statistics around um at least half of the girls getting married before the age of 18 so you know working on that anxiety i think if you go back and look at where you are in the states where child marriage is still endemic and create some you know opportunities for and i'm glad people talked about the advocacy along with lawyers not just using the courts but other ways i think i see an opportunity there i would also say that um, national programs tend to leave out adolescents so you are a child or you come into the national programs and you become when a girl becomes pregnant and that you know goes for janani suraksha or goes for maternity There is nothing in between that kind of eases this, and, and as actually girls get married and boys, they are getting married later and later. They are going to need services in that interim. That is the long-term trend. Maybe in certain now in certain states, marriage is happening very early. But as like in Gujarat, in Kerala, in Maharashtra, as girls and boys are deferring marriage, it's not that they don't require health services. so where are we linking our adults our national programs to providing services for young adults and adolescents and this would also include for example for you know access to contraception safe abortion it's not there is it's almost it's unspoken the government folks here the minister